This is the slot. Well, welcome to the slot. This is your B Luke Project set code 927. We've got dysphoria in the house with his amazing, unusual paintings that he does. So Mike, can you tell me a little bit about your work? Like what got you into it? Uh, I, was, I was sort of lucky to, somebody got me an interview at, uh, found, to do foundation arts about a year after leaving school which I wasn't into doing, but she persuaded me to go. And then when I actually went, I ended up arguing my case and getting in accepted. And uh, yeah, foundation was really useful because uh, you, you do lots of things. You sort of learn photography, sculpture, painting, life drawing, uh, uh, textiles, the whole lot in one year. It's like a, a really intense course. And uh, yeah, I just sort of threw myself into it really and then found myself applying to go to art college after that and uh, ever since I left art college uh, I've just yeah just done art whenever I can it's just my favorite thing I mean art oh, yeah it's a it's a very emotional time at the moment um, that yeah this last couple of years has been a roller coaster really I think oh, yeah. man, it's been a big roller coaster I mean for me it's been it's been all right it's been not so bad. But I know for a lot of other people out there, it's been quite difficult for a lot of people, you know? Yeah, well, like the Hill the Hill protest was literally two streets away from my house where the, the second fire to police vans and then the police sort of, sort of beat them up, basically. And then the following week, uh, there was another one. There was like helicopters go overhead. So it was not something I could, I could ignore. It was on the doorstep. And so I was watching sort of 20-year-old little girls sitting in front of policemen being bashed in the head by by batons and yeah that's not uh, right shields yeah it's, it's obviously going to inform what i do uh, you know i am have my latest, latest work involves on right police but to be that particular i suppose that'd be more appropriate for a poster than for a piece of art because uh, otherwise uh, i suppose the artist would generally want to see the universal the so you know rather than just Based everything around particular issues, um, you know, I responded to the Black Lives Matter, but in a very sideways way. I didn't feel it was my place to have a to make a sort of statement, but maybe I was sort of taking more the personal and sort of private way that people might relate to it, rather than the more obvious ways. I wasn't producing posters, for instance. Um, so, so what make you, um, why do you use mythological figures in your art? What, what actually brought that? Um, I guess, like, there's, I've always been uh, fascinated by stories like Arabian Nights or uh, the Greek myths or the Bible even, you know, the, there's a lot of uh, imagery. And it seems like humanity is sort of hardwired to, to need the, the mystical and the, the fantastic and, and, uh, you know, I'll use them in a sort of personal way, perhaps, like in an allegorical way. So maybe the, one of my pictures, I did the Kraken, which is sort of sea beasts coming out of the sea. But for me, it represented sort of unconscious uh, powers and uh, sort of like the, the things that are hidden away sort of coming, coming in, uh, into the light. Um, I, I, I would never want to be a fantasy artist. I don't think it's about escapism. It's more about trying to explain something in a different way. Like when we dream, we sort of collate lots of strange monsters and things, plus everyday banal things into one sort of narrative. And I guess I'd like my art to contain everything. And so I, I might have the, the banal mixed with the mystical in one picture. Um, Try, just sort of trying to explain the way in the way that your mind explains your life in dreams. You know, they're, they're sort of like uh, 
stories and dreams are like illustrations of where you're at at the moment. And, uh, and that's sort of how I, that's how my imagery sort of comes to me. Yeah, it's, it's like you're in like some very deep thoughts when you're doing it or so. Yeah, but I guess we all, you know, when we're asleep, the strangest things pop into our heads. And you think, where the hell did that come from? And I suppose that's... Many times. That's the fascinating thing is like trying to understand who we are and you know, where does it where does it come from and trying to understand it. That's, that's sort of what I'm trying to untangle when, when I'm drawing. So you done an art exhibition, um, I think, a few months ago. How did that go? Uh, I had one about, well, just before lockdown, I had an exhibition and, uh, yeah, it went really well. I mean, that was my first uh, solo exhibition for a long time. Uh, and it's, it's funny because when you work alone, you don't really think about how people are going to uh, react to your work. You, you just do it because you need to do it. And then it's only afterwards when you actually choose which pictures to frame and put up, then you actually start to sort of think about how, what's the overall impression. And I, I went for a sort of maximalist approach rather than just putting a few perfectly finished pictures. I just put about, well, I actually had 100 pictures framed. Um, so there's one wall that was just a complete wall pictures from the floor to the ceiling and wow. so wow and, and, and I just what? sorry just want to show everything essentially um and it's funny because people might appreciate pictures you didn't think were that finished you know there was a one picture of, of a man scurrying scurrying across a sort of uh, industrial space and those people like that and I, I, that was a very quickly drawn picture but it, you know, they latched onto the sort of energy of it and so uh, and so, and and what 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 sizes are your like pictures? What what sizes and what what kind of um, materials do you draw on? So for about five years, I did nothing but borrow drawings. It was like I felt this almost like a, a mission to see how far I could take borrow. So by necessity, they're fairly small, like a four, a three, um, and. Uh, when lockdown happened, I felt like the world had really changed and I needed to sort of look at things differently. And I felt my work, the bio work was quite dark. And I felt people needed something a bit more life, uh, life-giving and sort of warm. So I started painting again, and uh, but mostly painting on A3, mainly because my studio's area is quite small. Wow, oh, okay. Um, when I was at, when I left art college, I used to do giant paintings on canvas. It's quite upsetting because you end up having to take them off the cameras and roll them up and they all they get damaged and so uh, then you end up carrying them from place to place as you move house forever. So I've just sort of been practical and working fairly small, but yeah, my plan is to sort of do some bigger pictures fairly soon. That's really cool. And and what is what is your um, artistic influences? Uh, so uh, well, I guess uh, in terms of artists, I think Caravaggio, uh, I, I love Caravaggio, he's a Baroque artist. He was, his pictures are very modern. I mean, he was working in the 17th century, but his, pa his paintings look like modern film posters. They sort of jump out of the canvas at you. I think they're very bright, uh, sharply lit. They invented this thing called Chioscura, which is very sharp, contrasting shadows. And uh, there's something about the people he painted, they look like you could smell them. And also, they probably smell quite nice because they're the sort of people he chose. Um, and there's something very fleshy and sort of uh, sensible about his work, which I really love. Um, I, I also love Da Vinci because he was like obsessively exploring. He wants to understand everything. He wants to see what was underneath the skin you know, to the point of going to doing anatomy at a time when anatomy was seen as heretical. He was sort of doing his own DIY anatomy in his back shed. Um, Van Gogh was massive influence because I, I just love the fact that he, he never sold anything, he never really got any accolades during his lifetime, but that didn't deter him. He was so convinced of the value of his vision that he just carried on painting. And it was almost all constantly thrown in his face that nobody understood it, but it didn't stop him. And I, I, I guess was, for me, he's like a pure artist because of that singular vision and he didn't really try to copy anybody. I mean, he, he tried occasionally to copy other people, but I mean, generally he, he was very convinced that what he what he could see was worth worth doing. Uh, Hogarth, I really love Hogarth. I mean, 
he Hogarth loved London. He loved people. He was obsessed by detail, uh, and he was very critical of, like he hated pomposity and uh, injustice. And uh, his, his pictures are very, very um, uh, scathing. But at the same time, he's got quite a strong scene of empathy in his work, and he he was uh, one of the people who sort of campaign to get the new Bethlehem Mental Hospital created uh, because they had a strong sense of injustice. Um, so I found him a, 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 good, a good inspiration. And also things like Alfred Tenniel, who did the Alice in Wonderland uh, illustrations. And as a child, they just, uh, they just felt so real. I was just, I loved his illustrations. I could look at them for hours. Yeah, um, so, so what made you come up with the name Dysphoria? Uh, well, I was I do music as well, and I, I used to listen to a lot of death metal. I went through a period of not, listening to nothing but death metal. Right. Okay. Uh, I mean, as you know, I've like I talked to you earlier about you know I've, I've been very into hip hop, lots of rave music, drum and bass, but I just sort of went through this stage for a couple of years. All I could hear was death metal and screaming music. So right, okay, uh, okay, uh, okay. I, was creating, I was creating this sort of dark drum and bass music. So. I, Thought well, I'll use a lot of the bands started the, with the word dis, like dis uh, disorder, dis fear. There's lots of bands with this with this prefix. So I thought, well, actually, there was a, there was this record called Euphoria that came out. I used to love going to raves, and I loved the fact that house music was underground and it was like it was our music. It didn't belong to the mainstream. Yeah, that was the good old days, man. Yeah, but this record came out called Euphoria, which was Balearic beats, and it was like high-end uh, sort of a very ear candy sort of like it's almost like advert music and the advert for it had all these leggy women in bikinis lounging around in uh, Balearic Isles and it, it really irritated me because I felt they'd stolen my music so right okay yeah so dysphoria was the opposite of euphoria and and then when I made my first website I thought I'll use the name and then it just sort of stuck and I'll just uh, stuck with it so and also, uh, at the beginning, I felt I wanted a bit of anonymity. I didn't want to feel I had to censor myself. Uh, so it was easy to hide behind a name and so I could just be free to create uh, without feeling that people are going to judge me as a person. So. No, of course. As artists, we need that expression, don't we? We need that freedom, man. If we ain't got that freedom to express, what's the point? Yeah, yeah. So I'm sort of happier to have my own name attached now, but it was useful at that time. And it just sort of stuck, so I've just kept using it. Yeah. And how would you like your um, artistic career to progress? Uh, I guess I always want to get bigger, better, I want to become better, uh, do bigger pictures, better pictures. I'd like to reach more people. I mean, I'm quite a recluse at heart, really. I'm quite happy to just paint. If I was on a desert island, I'd probably just paint all day. But, cool. but at the same time, it's nice to get some feedback. It's nice to yeah. not feel that yeah. uh, you're just going to disappear into obscurity, you know. And, uh, and you know, maybe that could provide for my kids if uh, I was to get more well-known and actually get some money through it. Uh, that, that we could maybe sort them out in the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the exploration of art and collaborating with other artists and so forth. You know? The other thing is like, there's a constant battle between time uh, to make, you know, what, if I get too involved in the art, I end, end up not sorting out the bills. Um, I'm self-employed, so I'm constantly fighting the need to finish work to pay the bills. And I hear you, man, that's, that's got to come, it's almost got to come secondary sometimes, you know, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like one of those things that there's never enough time. So you have to fight yourself all the time. And, so true, man. You know, um, but it pays it pays to be organized and, and, and have have certain plans in action, doesn't it? No, it's true, yeah. Um, maybe not the most organized person. I suppose if I, when I'm creating, I'm not really thinking of the great plan. I'm just got this urge to create. So I'm just following that urge. But yeah, I, I suppose in the future, I would like to find a way that art became more sustainable, that I could actually make, make a proper living from art. 
I, I mean, I've sold prints and paintings through the exhibitions, but that's cool. That's more or less breaking even rather than making a profit because you know, like you have to pay for the gallery space, pay for frames, pay for printing for flyers, etc. So for break even, I'm happy. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I've, I've I've been involved with certain events over the years, and I remember going to an event at Adrenaline Village at the time, um, and I remember speaking with some of the promoters and you know they obviously invested like something like 15 grand for the whole thing you know and and so i was speaking to this guy at the time he's like saying you know you know we broke even and he was happy that he broke got his money back but it, it's so much more useful when you make just that little bit of profit isn't it yeah, but I wouldn't say become an artist to get rich because there's only room for a couple of Damien Hurst in the world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, that promoter must be doing it for love. He didn't do it to make, uh, you know, he's happy that it broke even. But yeah, he cr yeah. created this amazing thing. No, of course. Stood, of course. He stood in the middle of this amazing thing thinking, wow, this never existed and I created it. And that's that's ultimately what drives you, isn't it? It's not, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Passion. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, so, yeah, 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 yeah it's all right. Yeah. I'm just saying, you've got to love it, what you do. Otherwise, uh, if you're just doing it for money, it's going to be very frustrating. You know what, man? It's just like, um, to be really honest, it's just like when I do my art or music, I should say, um, I do it in my way, but... Uh, I do look to like get some returns from it somewhere along the line and not many years too far down the line, but you know, whether it's be from a venue or as you said, like you may do an exhibition and you may get some clients that or customers that buy your artwork. So that's, that's a good thing. And, you know, obviously we have to always reinvest into what we do and push it back out again and, hopefully the audience may get bigger, the profits may get bigger and so forth. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, the love is good, but there's definitely got to be an end to the means as well, isn't it? Well, yeah. But I mean, I, I suppose like David Bowie said, don't play to the gallery, you know, just make the uh, make the, the work that you want to see yourself. Um, because if you're just trying to chase likes and chase fame, I mean, you might get lucky, but... Uh, you got to find satisfaction in what you do uh, that will keep you going through the times when you're not being famous. You know, it's... no, it's it's very true. Being involved with music, there was like a time when um, I was just so in it, like doing some shows here, you know, making tracks, etc. And um, yeah, it's it's just uh, that what that rat race. Uh, I've never really liked the idea of that rat race. And because of that rat race, it became a lot more stressful. And yeah. you're sort of like chasing that thing like everyone else. And that made me kind of have to uh, stand back a little bit and just see what I was actually doing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I suppose the ideal situation, you get an agent who does all that for you. But uh, I mean, I had an agent for a while and he literally was a second-hand car dealer and that was his approach to selling art. And... He'd sort of say, I can sell that one, give me four or five of those, and it'd always be the picture I hated. It was always, it was just, I'd always choose the picture I thought was the most bland. Oh, no. So, you then, know what? Sometimes that's always the case, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, I'd, I'd churn these pictures out that I didn't really like, and it, and it wasn't satisfying, you know. Uh, so well, there wouldn't be an awful lot of points, so, you know. <laughs> So, so do you describe? How would you describe yourself? Do you describe yourself as an outside artist? Well, I was trained. Uh, you know, I went to Goldsmiths University, which was like quite prestigious. Um, and I guess it took going to university to, to say to people, "What do you do? I'm an artist," without saying, "I do this, but I'm an artist." Yeah. Um, so, in that way, it was useful, but. I've always liked the underdogs. I've always liked the outsiders. Um, and I find 
so in some ways the art world is very inward facing and outsider artists have got a very unique vision so uh, i probably identify more with outsider artists naive artists than mainstream ones uh, so yeah i would consider myself in some ways an outsider artist i'm, I'm quite a recluse i don't sort of feel i have to be on the scene as or anything like that so i just sort of pursue my own uh, path really so i guess in that way, I'm an outsider. But having been to art college, I probably feel more confident to say that I am an artist. But, but I would say to anybody starting out, don't feel you have to train to, to be an artist. Yeah, some, some people just got that natural talent, don't they? Um, well, I know people who can't draw very well, but they they have something to say. So I think their art is equally valid. I don't think it's necessarily all about skills. I mean, maybe I was born with a sort of certain knack of drawing, but I don't think even that should hold you back if you've got something to say. I think uh, that's the most important thing. I mean, you could be an amazing gra draftsman, but if you've got nothing to say, you're just creating a eye candy decoration that has no meaning and that's not really going to, add to the world in any way. I think, uh, you know, I know a lot of artists who are not particularly good at drawing, but they, their work is brilliant because it's got meaning. It's very, you know, it's got depth. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I went to London College of Printing, yeah, um, <laughs> in the 80s, and I'm not a drawer, but, like, I've done reprographic design, so, like with my art, with my 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 art, my more sort of visual art, not in video, but as art. Yeah. What I do is like I create a graphic diagram of some kind, and then certain artists that I may have around me or know, then I say, "Can you do this and enhance it?" Because I want to see more of a defi definition of it and so forth. So. That, that's how I do my drawing. As much as I'd like to be able to draw, but to well, like create that, with, that thing, that's how I you're do You're working it. like a producer in a way. Well, I, I produce music, innit? Yeah, I am a producer. Yeah. I produce but I, I mean, I'm a producer as in you're getting other artists to do what your vision is. That's you know? right, that's right, yeah. It's just like a film, like a film producer doesn't act or direct, but they without the producer, the film would never happen. That's right. And 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 with some producers, they've got such such a big vision and the, their ideas and their plan to actually make that thing work. They make it work with the right people to play the yeah. role or or things like that. So you're facilitating you know. stuff happening. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been doing Hurst himself gets a lot of uh, people to do his work for him. Uh, he's not big on author authorship, so he has like uh, art students to produce his work for him and they have to sign a disclaimer to say that they won't claim ownership of it. No, that's that's cool. And you know what? I've not heard his name in a long time, man. What's he up to at the moment? He's got an exhibition out at the moment uh, in, in London. Uh, although it's getting a bit panned by the critics. Um, he has been a bit quiet of late, yeah. Um, wow, okay. Yeah, he does some um, real good visual things as well, doesn't he? I mean, uh, I mean, I went to college with him. I suppose that's why I mentioned him. Uh, sort of knew him before he was famous. Uh, he probably yeah. would be too famous to bother talking to me now. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I guess what he has done is made art relevant. Everyone, everyone's heard of his name. And, you know, if he does something like that dual skull, it gets on national news. Whereas before, I think art was a lot more elitist and a bit obscure and almost deliberately obscure. And he sort of made art relevant and made people excited about art, which is a really good thing. Um, and the fact that he's massively rich, I suppose, could be an inspiration to some people trying to, you know, want to sort of find a route out of poverty or uh, limiting backgrounds. You know, he's not... He's not a posh person. He's not didn't come from the right sort of people. You know, yeah. so he did it his way, and he was a bit. Sort he, of... he definitely really did it his way, and took some time out of whatever it was that he done, and he was doing his own projects. Like the way how he got so passionate about it, you know, and so expressive. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, you know, there'll be massive queues to see his work. Uh, and that's something that hadn't happened in art for a long time, I think. You know, queues around the block of people desperate to see, to see his latest pieces. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's so cool. And, and what is your artistic practice, would you say? Uh, well, I don't have a studio. I don't rent a studio. Yeah. Uh, I work from home. So I get my inspiration comes at odd times. So you might get a brilliant idea at midnight or seven in the morning, which wouldn't really work with us having a studio. Plus, uh, I don't like working with people looking over my shoulder. So I'm much happier to just sort of be basically my, my, my bedroom is my studio. It's one place I've got some privacy. I've got family here. So uh, on a daily basis, I usually get up in the morning, make myself a coffee, sit in bed, drawing for about an hour. And last thing at night, I'll be drawing in bed before I go to sleep. And during the day, if I'm working, I'll just keep popping up to keep doing a little bit more. And if I'm lucky, get some time, I'll spend the whole day in there just painting and just until my legs go to sleep. Uh, you know, I'll just do it whenever I can, basically. Well, well, what I find is sometimes in my bedroom is the most comfortable place at times. It's, it's warm. Not saying the house isn't warm, but like sometimes it's warm. And I find that there are times when I do work in my room. Yeah. Like, you know, I find that I can actually get a lot more done with regard to certain things. Um, it makes me just more relaxed, more comfortable. And I don't have to think about anything. And I'm just into that thing. No, that's totally what I'm trying to get is yeah. in, in the zone. So... You know, if you've got distractions, it's pulling you out of the zone all the time. I mean, I think my phone is my biggest enemy when that comes to that because yes. getting messages it pulls you out of the headspace. And, you know, I suppose your bedroom's a bit like your cave. You can just shut the outside world out and just totally lose yourself in what you're doing. And that's when progress happens is when you just forget. Um, I mentioned legs going to sleep. It's like when you forget about comforts and stuff, you're just totally involved in what you're doing. And not thinking about the time. And and what what advice would you give um, someone who's starting as an artist? Um, I think, uh, well, firstly, just do loads and loads of art. There's no other way. Uh, the more you do, the more confident you'll get. The more progress you make. Um, and I, I guess you want to try to make yourself into the instrument so that when you get an idea, you can actually produce it the way you want it to happen. So just do as much as you can, whenever you can. If you don't feel inspired, then just draw your feet, draw your hands. Uh, it's all good practice, you know. It's like if you're doing music, you know, yeah. playing scales is, it's just keeping your hand in, it's just keeping momentum. And momentum is very important because you'll find you might not know what to draw, but if you start, you'll suddenly find ideas popping into your head. And the more you do, you'll find that all day there's more ideas popping into your head. And then you think, oh, what if I did it that way? I'll try it that way. But until you start, it's never going to happen. So just do as much as you can. I would also say, uh, that your art belongs to you. That basically, if you're trying to please other people, it's never going to please yourself. I but agree about that. You have to find out what you, you would like to see on the wall. And, and also not feel that people, you know, people will always judge you and criticize. So uh, just um, try to, I suppose if you think your art belongs to you, then you're following your own ideas and you're not just trying to get approval. I mean, trying to get approval is the worst thing you can do. I mean, uh, sometimes I get a bit tangled up and worrying about things like that. And I, the best thing I could do is say F off to everybody and, and then just like concentrate on what I want to do. Um, yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. And how, how much pieces of art do you have, would you say, right now and stuff that you, you know, would like to sell? Um, uh, well, that last exhibition, which was just before lockdown, had 100 pieces. That was about half of what I had to choose 100 out of. I probably had double that when I was choosing the best. Uh, probably done another hundred or so since then. But uh, when I put my, my 
the pictures I'm happiest with I put on Instagram, which is quite a useful sort of free gallery, really. You can sort of, uh, it's, good, it's a good incentive to sort of try and finish pictures enough to scan them and put them up on there. Um, so I could probably fill maybe another 50 pictures quite happily. And, and, and what are the favorite, your most favorite um, drawings you would say? Or, um, give me some of the names of your most favorite pieces. Uh, well, that changes all the time. I guess generally it's the ones I've just done um, because I feel I'm improving. So, but then I, there's a picture called Survivor, which uh, I liked. I didn't think other people would like, but they did, uh, which is that man running across a sort of oblique sort of industrial area. Uh, the Kraken Hornpipe is a picture I feel quite attached to because it's got a lot of very personal things. Uh, the... So about these sort of big birdie sailors doing a sort of dance on a on a deck of a ship while somebody's pointing out this sort of crock and uh, leviathan sort of uh, creature coming out of the water behind them uh, so well uh, that's quite a lot of meanings in there for me um, and also a lot of the lockdown paint paints I did a, a, a painting of uh, a girl with like a face filter like an Instagram filter of like cat ears and uh, 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 cat nose and, and whiskers looking out of a window with a reflection of buildings on the window. Right, okay. I, I think that was, I'm very happy with that one because I think it caught the sort of mood of the time, which was, we all didn't know how long it was going to last. It was very disruptive being isolated and and it felt like the only way people were going to communicate for, for, for the foreseeable future was through our phones. And so people putting cat filters on their heads was like the new way of relating to people. But at the same time as our phones are supposed to make us all more connected, they're actually we we're more isolated than ever before. So for me, it was very, uh, I felt I sort of hit, hit the target that I was trying to reach with that picture, trying to put across a mood, uh, sort of sadness, uh, isolation. Um, yeah, I've, I've checked out quite a lot of your artwork and they're very unusual, um, very different to what's been, been painted out there or drawn out there. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting, interesting material. So did you have any favourites yourself? Xbox and The Survivor, that's There's really quite amazing. a few that I've looked at and I'm saying, wow, it's like, it, I think you've done ones like some like sort of like angels, it's like almost like a formation of some angels and different things like that and what have you. But um, yeah, it's some interesting things there. Very, very, very unusual. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's nice, different, it's different. Um, and what I find is when someone explains, even if I'm not sure about of a painting of something, when someone actually explains it more in detail, then I'm thinking it, it can make you like it even more. Because no, I think it's, it's true. And, uh, I think uh, I assume that my work is blatantly obvious and I'm perplexed when people can't find a way in. So on Instagram, I'll try to be a bit more explaining. Um, it's also the titles, hopefully, let, give people a hook to get in, in there. Um, I, mean, I, I suppose for me, I'd, I would love the art to be like music. You don't need a qualification to enjoy it. You don't feel you need to be educated to have an opinion about it. You ask anybody and they'll say, oh, I hate country western or I hate mumble rap or whatever, but they won't have a problem of having an opinion. Whereas with art, people are scared to have an opinion in case it makes them look stupid or uneducated. So I wish art could be as direct as music. And I, you know, I'd hope my work is appreciated on a direct level without people feeling they have to uh, be quali qualified or educated to understand it. Because uh, I don't want <laughs> to hear you. Yeah. I don't want to be elitist. I don't like elitism. I'd, I'd like you know my work to reach everybody. And we did a ex I did an exhibition with a couple of art artist friends in a pop up in the middle of Broadmead, which is a sort of shopping area of Bristol. And what I loved about that was that just people, random people shopping, who'd never been in the gallery before. Yeah, you could see them looking around the corner like, "Am I allowed in? Am I not allowed in?" 
And one of the artists had a cute little dog who'd scamper up to the door to anybody who'd poke their head around and would come in to say hello to the dog. And there's loads of people saying, I've never been to the gallery before. And it's almost like the, it's like going to church, just sort of scared to st step over the threshold. No, definitely, man. Just giving people that extra, that, that other knowledge, isn't it? Well, I felt it was a lot more of an achievement to reach those people than to reach the people who are in the art world, you know, because you never know the repercussions of what they see may trigger them thinking, oh, I'm going to create something myself or, you know. Uh, or just, I, I, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, just anything that I'd like to reach, you know, everybody, not just the art world, I think. That would be my ideal. So any plans to put any on T-shirts or anything like that? Or even hats, maybe? Uh, hadn't occurred to me. I mean, I do graphic art as a living. So, uh, you know, I've produced T-shirts for other people, but that's what they, you know, they give me a brief and I've created them. Uh, I mean, I do prints. So I've sold more prints than originals because they're more affordable. Um, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And, and, and you know, we go, obviously, you're doing pre-production of uh, your, your, your paintings and stuff like that, your drawings. All individual pictures. Uh, I don't use digital. I mean, I, I use digital in my work, my, my paid work, but uh, I, all my work is done, you know, with a pen or a paintbrush. Uh, so when I get them printed, I try to print them exactly the same size. I don't do well, I'll have them postcards and stuff. But yeah, yeah. I'll try to make the prints look identical to the originals rather than make them into digital versions. I don't tweak them on the computer. Well, right, okay, okay. That's cool, that's cool. Yeah, man, but um, is there anything else that you want to say? Actually, in fact, before we forget, uh, tell me or tell the public where they can check you out they can see your work they can whether you've got a youtube instagram channel and you know and a website that they can actually go on to actually buy your material make orders and things like that yeah i should have written this down actually because <laughs> nobody's going to spell it but <laughs> oh, okay uh, dysphoria.art is my Instagram and Facebook, uh, which I tend to update a lot more than my websites. Um, I'm a web designer. I'm always telling off my clients for not updating the website, but I'm just, I don't. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, but, it always works different when we're actually doing our work than other, like, you know, doing other things for clients. So, yeah, I understand that. So that's where I'm, if I do a new picture, I'll put it on Instagram first. That's uh, the place where I'm, you know, I suppose it's nice to get instant feedback, conversation, meet other artists through Instagram. So I don't do anything personal on Instagram. You don't see pictures of me on holiday or anything. It's just uh, just purely art. Um, That's really cool. And That's my art, my website is dysphoria.com. So it's D-I-S-P-H-O-R-I-A.com. Cool. Nice one. And thanks for coming to the slot. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, right. man. You're now into the obedient project set code 927. You can get us on the website, um, www.topprojects.co.uk. Also, the YouTube channel, youtube.com, Snafe Top. And we're out of here, bro. Speak soon. Yeah? Speak soon. Yeah. Nice one. Nice one.